It's the 80s all over again, only worse. Hello. Ahoy. How's everyone doing? Just out here in the wilderness, you know, stretching out. Ahoy there. My goggles are foggled. Hey, there is no acting. It is all not completely unreal. Crooked. Oh, there we go. That's better. Ahoy. Yeah, so, I don't know. Yeah, never really fully know how much sense I'm making. And since I never get any feedback at all, wine, um, it's hard to tell. Maybe. We could improve our electoral politics, our, you know, elections, our politics in general, by looking at the world. Are these crooked? They always feel sort of weird and crooked. Just like our politicians. <laughs> anyway, yeah, do a survey. Look around at how the rest of the, uh, the nations on Earth do their electoral politics. Goggles are foggled. Anyway, so I was uh, talking to someone and we agreed that the duopoly is not the best way to go and that they have not represented us well. Just concentrating on le electing the, the right one of the two as president is fruitless and futile. It's this insane idea that, oh, just vote for Biden and everything will be better he'll solve all the problems, is, is a lie. One, he's had a ton of time as a senator, didn't solve all the problems. He was vice president for eight years with one of our most positive, potentially oh. progressive presidents, Obama, and they didn't fix all the problems. A lot of things actually got worse. And a, again, a very small number of people benefited the most. So you can't just simply say, oh, well, this time the Democrat will make it better. And then you go, you swing back, oh, the Republican will make it better. Enough of that. Seriously, we need to end that. And I think the best way to do that is look around and, and harvest, right? Harvest the best parts of other uh, governments and the way they work. Multi-parties, bring up all of our parties, give them all equal access and, and try to cooperate in the best possible way. Not, not fight over these cultural uh, differences, but structure things to, to make class-wise, to make things better for everyone, more equal, more equitable, more equal. I know there are differences in those words and they're often misused, but we also need things to be closer to equal or to have equal access to resources and to means of production, right? Take back the tanks, take back the things that we can use to make food and money. And everyone deserves healthful food, clean water, and a private residence. Holy fuck, we should not have a single person without some kind of private residence, whether it's a house, an apartment, a flat, a studio, all those different possibilities. No one needs to have an insane mansion. No one needs that. Fuck all mansions make things available for everyone so that you, every person, if they want to, can have a place that they can go that is that person's place. Whether they choose to share a house with other people or they want their own little studio, whatever, everyone deserves to have a, a bathroom and a place to get away from others. There should be no houseless people anywhere. We should at least fix that. Break down the duopoly, break down the current sort of so-called representational democracy and make something better. And you can't do that by just voting the right person in. This, this person I talked to online, that's what they said. 
it's not, it's never, you can't do that. It's never about just getting the right guy to be president because usually that person doesn't have all of the power and they end up, if you look at Obama, right? The, the difference between the promise and the outcome and how he went from being already well off to incredibly rich. He benefited from being president, but most of us did not benefit from him being president. When you just have two all-powerful parties that control the entire process, the national debates, the elections, the primaries, um, you don't get, there's, is, there's not a, a good way to pressure them to do what we want them to do. And I think the Democratic Party half of the duopoly really shows that best. The primary was uh, just a joke, right? It doesn't, within the Democratic primary, your vote just does not matter. Oh. So the so-called leadership of the Democratic Party decides the primaries, and that decides who the nominee is for something like a general election. The Republicans probably have their side of that and, and lots of problems as well when it comes to actual primaries and listening to their they're registered uh, Republicans. I'm not a Republican. I never have been. So I, I brought up, you know, allowing the rest of our parties having a, a, a situation where they have equal representation and equal access. So national debates wouldn't just be blue team, red team. It would be anyone who is running for president, but keep those as even and accessible to everyone as possible. Make it less about money. And then that way the voting public could actually get a feel for everyone who is running. And this doesn't have to just be for the presidential election, for all elections, right? Our other parties get shut out and that's unfair. But when I uh, suggested to this person, right, we should change that, they pointed to European countries that have multi-party systems. Said that often it, it doesn't work out any better, that they end up just sort of they try to cooperate, but they end up caving in to the, what he said was the sort of most extreme right minority of, of parties, and that it doesn't necessarily work out much better. But at least more people are involved, and you have the idea of cooperation. So I think what we could do is look around and take the best parts of other people's multi-party systems. So Ireland, I think, is a great example. They, for the most part, seem to have a system that works well. And we could identify what works best and adapt those parts and, and use them. And then we could identify what isn't working and try to figure out why. So what are the flaws in a multi-party system? How can we improve that? Since we already have multiple parties in the U.S., right? Every time, every election, there are other smaller parties struggling to be heard and to get some attention, and they deserve equal access. No matter who you choose to vote for, you should see everyone who is running, and they should all have the same uh, platform, right? Not the same platform, but the, the same access to reaching the public. So a national debate is not a national debate if it's always just between two people, two parties. And look at the most recent one, our first presidential national debate this time, was just in sick. It was wrong. Oh. Whew. Well, golden hour is almost over. It's called super sunshine hour, awesome light hour, golden hour, golden showers, uh, whatever it's called. It's pretty much done. Thank you. And I'm out. Plot point. Pineapple. Plot point. Pineapple.